welcome to the Hedgehog Hollow. So today I am here guesting with the Academy of Scrapbook and Arts again and the theme is in the air. So I was thinking about how I could incorporate that into today's tip, trick or tutorial as always and I was looking through some of our viewer requests and somebody had asked me to talk about ink blending, perfect backgrounds, particularly when working with some of these stencils that I'd shown you in a previous video. So I was looking at these, this is the My Favourite Things uh, cloud stencil. And it's all there to help you blend cloud backgrounds. So I thought, well, let me show you how to blend the perfect cloud background and then we'll use this in our cards. So we'll be in the air. So I'm going to be taking this, it has four sides or you can kind of use it in different ways. And we'll be using some of our Distress Oxide. So I picked out Salty Ocean, Broken China and Tumbled Grok tumbled glass even. And I'm going to be using those picket fence brushes that I used. Um, I did actually do a review. I don't think it's quite been published yet. It's in our perks program area. It's not actually on our main area yet. If you are interested in our perks program, you can check it out in the top right hand corner. We release all of our content to our perks program members early. They get to see all of our videos before everybody else. They also get tons of exclusive coupon codes, things like 15% off at Ranger, 20% off at other stores, 5% off their uh, $5 off $25 purchases, uh, free shipping at lots of places as well. So there's tons of reasons to join. Plus you get that early access as well. So um, what I wanted to do is I've already taped down my cardstock. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. This is the Tonic Ultra Smooth White Cardstock. It has a slight coating on it, so it's really nice for ink blending. Um, but the reason I've done it this way is you can either use the sticky sheets, and I've done a tip on how to do that with stencils. Again, you can check that tip of how to use it with stencils in the top right hand corner. Or I just take a little bit of my Thermoware Purple Tape. I like the thin one that fits in the tape dispenser. Um, and you just put it on the side where you know you're going to be cutting off um, afterwards. But just pop that on there. So I'm going to use one brush for each of my blues. I tend to wash, I only have one set of the picket fence. So I've been washing them after each use at the minute. Some people do one set per, um, like they have one for the blue, one for the green. But because I bought the mixed pack of all the different sizes, I found it really easy to just rinse them off and then I leave them on the workspace just to dry in between uses. So I'm gonna start off with my tumbled glass. So that's how I like to start with my lightest shape. You can of course use your Nuvo sponges, my Nuvo stencil brushes, whatever preference you have. And I'm just gonna start with a really light coat. So I'm just gonna go like this. Then I'm gonna rotate my stencil just to get a different effect. And still with the same amount, because I've still got ink on my stencil brush, I'm just gonna go down my page. And I'm just gonna keep doing the same thing. So again, just to rotate. And it's getting a bit lighter, but that's fine. We want to build layers. So when we're building a sky, we're really gonna work with layers. And you can do this with sunsets, with all sorts of different skies. Again, I'm gonna rotate. Now I'm gonna go back again, tumbled glass, and I'm gonna start my darkest at the bottom. I'm gonna just give it a little tap on the side because I don't want it too intense. And don't worry if your cardstock moves because the sky isn't perfect. Again, just to rotate, and a little brush. And in between each time, just make sure your stencil is in a different place to last time. And this is how you're going to build up that effect of really fluffy clouds, lots and lots of different texture. And if you find you have um, the same stencil type next to each other, just rotate it again. The other thing you're going to find is you're going to build up ink on your stencil. So by building up ink on your stencil, each time you brush, you're going to move some of that ink onto your cardstock. See down the bottom here, it's a little bit stronger than I'd like it to be. Great thing about Distress Oxides, of course, is they have pigment in them. So they take a little bit longer to dry. So I can go back in and work that ink a little bit more. You can see that I can then just kind of blend out a little bit. So I can take some of that harsh intensity down. It's a little bit harsh at the top here, so I'm gonna add in some more layers. So again, I'm going to go with that tumbled glass. I'm going to tap off because as I say, it's a little bit intense. So I don't want it quite so intense. And I'm just going to start adding. I can also go just on the corner if I just want to add a little bit of a V. 
I'm getting some really pretty fluffiness in, which is exactly what I want to add. Now I did of course add in some of these darker colors too, because this is where I can start adding in some texture. So I'm gonna take my stencil over here. I'm really gonna tap off quite a lot of that ink, but I'm just gonna start on my stencil. I'm just gonna add little bits and pieces. Again, little rotate, just a little bit. And just by adding a little bit of contrast, and you kind of naturally start to see where you want to add those contrasts in. But it's really looking like, you know when you look out that plain window and you see that fluffiness in the clouds? That's the effect we're wanting to do. Here, I've really got my stencil on an angle, and that's where I'm going here, because I feel like it's a bit too straight. And here, I'm gonna go in with some salty ocean, because I feel like it needs breaking up a little bit. And that's what I'm gonna do with my salty ocean. I'm gonna blend it out here. I'm gonna go this way a little bit different. And at the bottom here, I feel like it's a little bit harsh. So again, if you need to, tap it off to the side. Use your glass mat, your easy clean mat, whatever your preference is. And you can just round these out. You can go back to your mid shade. And if you need to, you can tape back down. I kind of allowed mine to start moving a little bit because sometimes it's easier to let your cardstock move around. But if you need to, like here, I really need, need it to sit still for a second. I'm also going to just hold on and just blend my edges just because the edge of my cardstock is a little stark white at the bottom. So I'm just gonna blend some of that color in. And of course I know that I'm gonna trim off some of those little edges too because I'm gonna make my cardstock smaller for matting. So I really have a nice kind of fluffy effect on there. So I'm really happy with where I've got to. So I'm gonna put the lids back on my ink pad and I'm gonna move my glass mat to the side because I don't want my card base to be covered in blue ink too. We're gonna to assemble a really quick and easy card. So we'll just move this to the side. Clear up wise, just wipe down your glass mat with a baby wipe, water, um, and a kitchen towel, paper towel. Super, super simple. But now we're gonna do some trimming. So I'm gonna take my Tim Holtz trimmer. Again, you know that this is my favorite trimmer. And if you want to see my two minute tip on how to use this, you can check that out in the top right hand corner. But I'm gonna cut this down to five inches. I'm gonna kind of even it a little bit each way. If you cut down at the bottom of this piece here, this was a viewer tip that somebody gave me and honestly, it's been one of the best tips that anyone ever gave me. Um, it really does stop it moving anywhere at all. Um, and I'm gonna cut off a little bit on this side too. I want this to go down to three and three quarters wide. And you can see there, I've just got that beautiful fluffy kind of card panel. Really, I'd like to have blended that out. What I could do is just take a slightly damp um, brush and it would blend out some of that as well. Or I could use a little bit of elbow grease or add your sentiment over the top. No one will ever notice it afterwards. And the thing is, I notice it. If I pointed it out, you might not have noticed it either. So there are some ways I could get rid of it. I am kind of bugged by it. So I'm gonna just use a little bit of elbow grease to soften that out with a little bit of tumbled glass. So if I just take some of that, and now if I show you, you'll see it's a lot softer. And as I say, if I add a little bit of water to it, I could soften it out even more. So there's definitely ways you can fix mistakes in your cards. So what I wanted to show you was a super simple way to add a sentiment to your card. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work out on my acrylic block where I want my sentiment to be. So this is my acrylic block. I like using the Lawn Fawn or the Catherine Pooler ones because they have grid lines on them. So I want my sentiment to be on the second one down. That's where I want my sentiment to end, the second um, grid line down. 
So this is the sentiment I'm going to be using. It says, I hope you get to do something fun to celebrate. It's from this um, Sophia Frames set, which is in the Hedgehog Hollow May box. We have a couple left. It's been such a popular box. There's over $80 worth of supplies in that box for $39.99. Um, there's tons of things in there and we're going to be using the teapot from the same stamp set again you can check out the unboxing in the top right hand corner and we'll put a link to the subscription box um, underneath in those descriptions for you what you're now going to do is you're going to line up the bottom of your sentiment with that second grid line and you're just going to leave your photopolymer sentiment just loose on your table because it naturally will be straight if you put it on a glass mat like this it's not as naturally going to be straight you just want it on a surface like this and you just leave it it'll be naturally straight so we're going to pop it down pick it up like so i'm going to take my gina k amalgam ink ink it up nicely a few taps looks pretty good and this is a tip for if you haven't got your misty to hand because we don't always have a misty or a stamp platform and then what i like to do is i angle my acrylic block until i can see that my third grid line is aligned with the edge of my um, base piece and then i just lower down my acrylic block and now i press my sentiment down and lift and now I have a perfectly straight sentiment so that's how if you don't have a ruler or um, a stamp -a jig or a stamp platform you can get a really nice straight sentiment so there's a top tip for you so now I'm going to start assembling my card together I'm going to leave my sentiment to dry for a second so I have my card base here already scored and so I'm just going to fold this in half I'm going to use my uh, tonic teflon bond folder here and whenever I mat my cards I do it with it open because it stops any bounce and it will give you a nice alignment I'm going to take my Nuvo tape runner here apply some tape and again align three sides evenly your fourth side will automatically align itself do the same on this one so my black is the tonic black satin as you all know that's what I that's all my cards with and you want to cut that one down to five and a quarter by four inches and then we're going to align three and my fourth does itself and then I've already pre-stamped out that teapot and I colored it in using some Copics um, if you want my tips for alcohol markers you can check those out in the top right hand corner I did my top three tips the things that I wish I'd known for alcohol markers and I've already popped some foam tape on the back um, just because I like using some foam tape it pops things up nicely um, just makes everything super simple I also added some glitter nouveau drops just to add a little bit of shimmer in the middle of my poppies so everything was just ready to go and I cut it out using my scan and cut because just make everything nice and easy and there you go beautiful card just a beautiful background on there and you can see how that looks so super super simple but love how that came out don't forget you get your hands on the hedgehog hollow subscription box we partner with a different illustrator or company every single month we have a different theme and um, we've got sophia caldwell this month doing these beautiful illustrations next month we're going to be under the sea and the month after we'll be with wow embossing we've got some really fun ones coming up and say so this month you have 80 dollars worth of stamping supplies for 39.99 and we ship them worldwide so love this one and i hope you enjoyed learning how to blend the perfect in the air cloud background thank you so much for joining me here at the academy don't forget to hit that subscribe button ring the bell for notifications of course give us a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that join button to get all of your hedgehog hollow member perks too i will see you again tomorrow for another tip trick technique maybe something a little bit different you never know happy crafting everyone and i'll see you again very soon bye